Hi, I'm Dave Balkin of Joseph L. Balkin, Inc. We're New York City's largest house sewer and water service line contractor, and I'd like to take a few minutes to explain to you about the three main type of control valves that you would find on your water service line. The most common is a gate valve, which as its name implies, has a gate inside with raises and lowers. The inside of a gate valve appears like this. The stem extends down through the gate and gets raised or lowered as you turn the handle. Where most people have trouble with the gate valve, even though it's a, obviously a very simple device, is they don't understand the intricacies of how to operate it. You should be exercising your valves, any valves in your home, about once a year, which very few people do. So what happens is the handle might get stuck. And the inclination is to use brute force, which you never want to do. Any type of valve, you never want to use a jerking motion. So on a gate valve, at the very top is something called a packing nut. You can back that off using a wrench, a half a turn or a quarter of a turn, and that frequently will loosen up the handle. If that doesn't do the trick, again, no brute force. You take a wrench that would act as an extension, and even gentle force start the valve moving. If you're attempting to close a valve and the water does not shut completely, again, do not use force. The trick of the trade is this. Have a sink open, have some water running. You close the valve as far as you can just using regular hand power. You then open it back up, repeat the action. The reason the valve is not closing is not because you didn't apply enough pressure. It's not closing because there could be some corrosion inside the body of the valve. Why you have water running in your sink is as you open and close the gate and any corrosion breaks loose, it will flow out of your sink and then your valve will close. Never use brute force. The second most common type of valve on a domestic water service line, which has been almost exclusively in use in New York City since the 1990s when it became legal, is called a full port ball valve. Why full port? That means that the ball that's hollowed out inside of this valve is not smaller than the pipe entering the valve. There's no restriction. If you were to take a part of ball valve, which I did here, there's typically a stainless steel ball inside. A mere quarter of a turn will close this valve. That's it. No half turn, no full turn, you will break the valve. And there's typically there's an arrow that shows you what direction to move the valve on. Now even this valve that I recently moved can be also a little bit difficult to move. What you do is, similar to a putting on a wrench on a gate valve, you would take any kind of pipe extension, place it on the handle, do not jerk the handle, just gently, gently. With the extension, you can open and close the valve. Now, a second tip with a ball valve. This is considered a fast opening valve, unlike a gate valve. A gate valve could take six to say 10 turns to open it or close it. Water can gently be reintroduced into your plumbing system, always with a faucet on, so any air in the line can come out. A ball valve, on the other hand, is quick. So if you have your valve closed and there's no water in your plumbing system and you just open that up full blast, something called water hammer will occur. Unless you gently introduce water back into your plumbing system and allow the air to escape from a sink, water will go full force through your empty plumbing system. It will hit an elbow somewhere, and there's a very good chance it will blow your plumbing apart. Do not do that. Always be gentle. Always have patience.
Now the third type of valve, which is more and more common, especially in New York City, as fire sprinkler systems are becoming required on more and more types of buildings. They used to only be required in warehouses, commercial buildings, multi-family buildings. They're now being frequently required on two-family houses and three-family houses. This is called an O, S, and Y valve. What that stands for is outer stem and yoke. Why that's important on a fire main is unlike a domestic water service where you know if your water's on or not, you open the sink, your water's on, your water's not on. On a fire sprinkler system, you really have no way of knowing whether the valve is open or closed. You cannot test it. What an OS and Y valve makes it clearly apparent. If the stem is visible, the gate is up. If the stem is not visible, you can see it's getting lowered. That means the valve is closed. That's the difference in an OS and Y valve. And that's why it's a safety precaution and it is required by code. Another little thing about an OS and Y valve, it has to be UL listed. That's the underwriters laboratories. That's an internationally recognized organization that tests. And those are your three main type of valves. I hope that's been of some help to you.